I'm going to show you a video clip where Brigadier General Pat Ryder, one of the official military spokespeople for the Pentagon, is going to share exactly where the military of the United States, including our Navy, stands in position defensively in the Middle East in support of Israel. I think it's really important for you to know the truth about what's going on. So after the video clip is done, I'm going to break everything down for you and tell you exactly what this means. Between October 17th and the 24th, uh, U.S. and coalition forces have been attacked at least 10 separate times in Iraq and three separate times in Syria uh, via a mix of one-way attack drones and rockets. So again, those are the initial numbers. We're continuing to work to CENTCOM to ensure we get you the facts on these. These at least 13 attacks uh, on U.S. forces in Iraq and Syria, um, do you believe that Iran is responsible for these? Were these all conducted by Iranian-backed proxies? Well, you know, I, I think... Um, We've been pretty clear on this, and, I, and my uh, colleagues at the White House yesterday talked about this as well. Um, we know that the groups conducting these attacks are supported by uh, the IRGC uh, and the Iranian regime. What we are seeing is the prospect for more significant escalation against U.S. forces and personnel across the region uh, in the very near term coming from Iranian proxy forces and ultimately from Iran. So by virtue of our announcement over the weekend, uh, we are preparing for this escalation both in terms of defending our forces and responding decisively. And I just want to emphasize the point that I made earlier, which is that we always reserve the right to defend ourselves and we will never hesitate to take action when needed to protect our forces and our interests overseas. So to be clear, um, we have significant capabilities in the theater right now, right? I mean, you've got the Ford that's in the Eastern Mediterranean. You've got an expanded number of fighter aircraft throughout the region, in addition to the naval assets that are already in the Central Command AOR. So there should be no confusion uh, whether or not you know, we have the ability to, to respond to any potential threats right now. The announcement over the weekend, as it highlighted, is intended to enhance those capabilities uh, and sustain those capabilities uh, for as long as we may need in order to continue to both deter and protect our troops. Since that Hamas terrorist attack, we've also been crystal clear that we do not want to see the situation in Israel widen, or widen rather, into a broader regional conflict. And as you've heard President Biden, Secretary Austin, and other senior U.S. leaders say, our message to any country or group thinking about trying to take advantage of this situation to widen the conflict is don't. We've already deployed a significant number of additional U.S. military capabilities into the region to bolster our regional deterrence efforts, strengthen our capabilities there, and enhance our ability to respond to a range of contingencies. In addition to the capabilities that we've already announced, I can also confirm that the New Jersey Air National Guard's 119th Expeditionary Fighter Squadron arrived within U.S. Central Command's area of responsibility today with additional F-16 Fighting Falcon Squadron uh, bolstering U.S. posture to deter further aggression in the region. And again, it is our aim to avoid any regional expansion of Israel's conflict with Hamas, but we stand ready and prepared to protect and defend our partners and our interests, and will act to do so. Finally, in terms of force protection, uh, it, the message is simple. As Secretary Austin has consistently made clear, we will take all necessary measures to defend our troops and our interests overseas. Okay, let me break this down and let you know exactly what this means. I'm going to give you a bit more information and just try to explain to you what the possibilities are here for some near future engagements that you may see in the Middle East. The U.S. has deployed two carrier strike groups, 11 Burke-class destroyers, a number of Ticonderoga-class cruisers, amphibious assault ships, terminal high-altitude area defense, and Patriot missile defense systems, multiple squadrons of fighter jets, strategic bombers, and a number of other undisclosed assets to the Middle East area. Now, this is very serious, and on top of this, the United States military has asked Israel not to engage in ground warfare at this time. Not because they're trying to slow Israel down, but simply because the United States military is still trying to get more equipment, additional resources, so that they can get their strategic capabilities built up to the highest level in that area, so that when Israel does engage on the ground, and they will engage on the ground, that the United States will be fully prepared for whatever may happen. Now, analysis of this is very difficult, because you could simplistically take one or the other side. You could say, well, we don't want World War III. We don't want additional engagement or additional conflict. We don't want the United States to be 
over there are involved at all. That is essentially true. And perhaps the greatest way to do that is with a massive show of force. So if there is anyone out there who is thinking about it, they may in fact think twice about doing such a thing. Let me be clear. The United States military force is primed and ready to engage in conflict right now. They have all of the necessary military equipment and strategic reserves to sustain an ongoing defensive and offensive military campaign in the Middle East if need be. I want to share with you what the best possible outcome here is and the, the worst possible outcome. We are going to know very shortly within the upcoming weeks and months which one of these is going to play out or something in between. So what's going to happen here? is the United States military is going to give Israel the go-ahead. Once all of the strategic military reserves and equipment are in place, we're going to say it's go time. Israeli military is then going to engage in a ground invasion of Gaza. After this occurs, best possible outcome, the Israeli military quickly and efficiently takes out Hamas, its strong points, strategic locations, tunnels, rocket launching areas, and they essentially eliminate nearly all capabilities of Hamas and then quickly trying to get the Gaza Strip back into some sort of normalcy and rebuilding process where, of course, humanitarian aid is going to pour in from the rest of the world. There's going to be some rebuilding efforts and then some additional efforts likely put in place, I'm sure Israel is going to want, to prevent Hamas from ever rising up in power again. This is the best possible outcome. And because the U.S. military force is so strong in that area, no other country, group, or organization decides to engage further in the situation. Worst possible outcome. Iran has already stated that if Israel engages in a ground invasion in Gaza, that they will get more directly involved. Now, we know they're going to do this through Hezbollah. They are already doing this, directly funding this proxy terrorist organization, Hezbollah, to combat with Israel. But what would make this so much worse is if Iran got directly involved in this situation. If Iran or another Arab country engages directly with Israel, not through a proxy terrorist organization, the United States will respond. This is going to be the scary thing. This is what we do not want to happen because the U.S. is not going to sit back and watch it. We're already letting them know that that is not going to happen. So really, once the United States gives Israel the go-ahead to engage in the ground warfare, the chess game has now moved to the opposite side, basically Iran's side. And we're essentially going to say, what is your move going to be now? We're ready. We're in position. What are you going to do? And we do not want Iran to do anything. We do not want them to make an aggressive move. I do think that they're going to tell Hezbollah to increase their attacks, but we don't want any direct engagement from Tehran. This would be a bad thing because when Tehran engages and the United States retaliates, then you're going to have some issue with other surrounding Arab countries and Russia and China. And this is when things get very serious because now we get into the unpredictability of the actions of other countries militaristically. How far are they willing to go? And this is where you get the worry of World War III. When world wars occur, when they break out, usually what you see happening is these small little things. You know, you see this small engagement, this conflict in a certain area. I know you all learned about this in high school, whether or not you forgot about it. World War I, World War II, you're seeing these militaristic buildups, imperialism nationalism, alliances, all of a sudden it builds up into this powder keg moment where everyone's involved. In this situation, we are seeing the buildup starting to happen, but we do not want World War III. So what should we do in this situation? Is the United States doing the right thing right now? The answer is yes. Now, I know I'm going to get some flack from some of you on this because you're going to say, Vin, how dare you? We shouldn't be doing World War III. I understand. I don't want World War III either. But if the United States does not put a show of force out there right now, I can guarantee you that if Israel goes into Gaza and Israel needs to go into Gaza, enough with the nonsense of people out there who are saying Israel needs to stop, they need to disengage. That is ridiculous. They have been invaded by an outside group into their country. They have been directly attacked. 
in warfare. Their people have been killed, beheaded, raped, stolen, and rockets are being shot across the border into their country. They have no option. Any other sane country on planet Earth, if faced with the same situation, no sane country on planet Earth would ever allow such a thing to stand. You have to eliminate that threat completely. Israel has no choice. Now, Israel does have a choice on how they do it. They need to do it with the least amount of civilian impact possible. And so far, they're doing that. Even though there's videos coming out that are showing all of this negative out, I mean, maybe it depends on what you're watching, if you're seeing it or not. A number of those videos are whole bunk garbage that is being created by Hamas and some of the Palestinian people. Some of it's real. It is hard to figure out what's true and not much of it is staged. And much of the media is either supporting bias one side or the other side. But regardless, if the United States is not there, I can guarantee you that you are going to see other countries in the area engage in direct warfare with Israel. This is what we do not want. And the best possible way to prevent that is a massive show of force from the United States. It doesn't mean it's going to prevent it. It doesn't mean that Iran is not going to directly engage. They may. But... If the United States isn't there, they will. So right now we're looking at a they may situation versus a they will situation. Now, once they engage, the U.S. really needs to try to keep things defensive. Shoot rockets out of the air. Shoot missiles out of the air. Eliminate drone threats. We want to eliminate as much of the offensive as possible because the more offensive the United States goes with other countries like Iran, the more unpredictable the situation gets and the more likely other countries are going to start to build up their military presence and possibly want to engage as well. Most seriously, Russia or China, then we're talking about bad, very, very bad news, okay? I think Russia and China are going to think very long and hard about whether this is the actual moment. But if they do it, then they're saying that this is the moment. Is this the moment? I hope not. I seriously and sincerely hope not. But that's going to be based on, on their decisions. Now, if we see other countries get involved, the United States, again, should remain as defensive as possible. But if we engage offensively, we get to more unpredictability. So in my opinion, the United States is doing the right thing here in a very complex and tough situation. I do not want World War III. I do not like U.S. spending militarily or sending money across the waters to things that have nothing to do with us. Trust me, I am not a war monger. It is not my thing. I want us to get out of Ukraine. I want us to pull out of a num number of different places. But right now, this is unfortunately the right decision in a very bad situation. Because to not do this would be far worse. Way worse. You would be literally setting up the situation for World War III to happen. So hopefully... This show of force will keep direct engagement of other countries to zero. I would like to invite you to subscribe to the channel because if you want to be kept up to date with information like this, that's very clear and direct and concise and truthful about what you should really expect to happen with these types of situations and other U.S. and global video clips and world situations that I'm going to bring to you, come along with me. Subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you here. I also love to read your comments. I read every single one of them. I mean, we don't have that many yet, right? We're going to build this channel up. We're going to start getting a ton of comments on there, but I read them all and I like seeing them. Even the ones that disagree with me, that's okay. We welcome that here. So go ahead, give the video a like, share it with others if you think it's important. Leave a comment below. As always, I'll catch you on the next one.